Welcome music lovers. Today, we delve into the extraordinary life of Scatman John, the beloved musician behind hits like, Scatman, and, Scatman's World. Discover the inspiring journey of how John Paul Larkin, overcoming a speech impediment, became a global sensation with his unique blend of scat singing and dance music. So let's dive in. Scatman John born John Paul Larkin on March 13, 1942 in El Monte, California, United States of America. Growing up in nearby El Sereno, Los Angeles, Larkin faced a severe stutter by the time he learned to speak, which deeply impacted his childhood traumatically. He was bullied, often severely, and endured physical and emotional abuse. He would struggle with the condition throughout his formative years, unable to recall a time when he spoke fluently. Until he turned 12, Larkin improvised playing the piano on his mother's coffee table. For him, the piano became a sanctuary of artistic expression, offering solace from his speech struggles. He often retreated behind the instrument, finding comfort in music where words failed him. At the age of 14, Larkin discovered Ella Fitzgerald's How High the Moon, which served as his gateway to scat singing and jazz. Influenced by iconic musicians like Louis Armstrong, Stan Getz, John Coltrane, Art Pepper, and Bud Shanks from an early age, Larkin found inspiration in their musical innovations. John viewed scat singing as a form of free stuttering, considering it his primary language. At 14, John had his first drink, finding solace in its effects, but soon, alcohol became a crutch. By 18, he was performing piano in Southern California bands, yet his personal life spiraled as he battled alcoholism and delved into hard drugs like cocaine and heroin. Despite his success as a jazz pianist, John still felt depleted and overwhelmed by feelings of inferiority. In 1984, Larkin, still immersed in jazz, collaborated with saxophonist Joe Farrell to record his debut album, John Larkin, released under his transition label. However, tragedy struck in 1986 with Farrell's death, prompting Larkin to confront his substance abuse head-on. Recognizing the toll of drugs and alcohol, he made the courageous decision to get sober. Consequently, the album, created during his tumultuous times, was shelved, only to be rediscovered later, now acclaimed for its avant-garde jazz brilliance. During his journey to recovery, Larkin found solace and support in Judy McHugh, granddaughter of comedian Eddie Cantor and songwriter Jimmy McHugh. Her unwavering encouragement inspired Larkin to embrace his talents as a jazz pianist and explore singing, a new dimension to his performances that earned him standing ovations. Larkin often credited Judy for making him feel worthy and recognizing his immense talent from the start. Together, they relocated to Berlin, Germany, in 1990, where Judy became Larkin's guiding force, nurturing his career with dedication and belief. Larkin and Judy tied the knot in 1994, cementing their partnership and shared commitment to each other. After overcoming initial culture shock, Larkin embarked on performances aboard cruise ships and in hotels across Europe, arranged by Manfred Zaringer, the founder of Iceberg Records in Denmark. Judy presented Manfred with a tape containing Larkin's typical jazz standards, but it also featured some of his exceptional scat singing. Intrigued, Manfred proposed a groundbreaking idea, fuse Larkin's scat singing with techno and dance, an unprecedented combination. Though initially doubtful, Larkin agreed to give it a try, leading to his signing with the Iceberg label. Iceberg Records strategized a single and album release, licensed worldwide to RCA. Larkin was sent to Catania Studios in Bottrop, Germany, where producers Tony Catania and Ingo Kays sampled his scatting syllables and created a catchy hook that would become his first single, Scatman. Despite the song's potential, Larkin's main concern was revealing his stutter to the world. Judy proposed incorporating his stuttering into the song and using it to inspire children, resulting in the iconic line, If the Scatman can do it, so can you. Larkin also repurposed some older lyrics from his 1986 album. Adopting the stage name, Scatman John, he later cultivated a classic jazz look in a hat and suit. The single was released in Europe and became a massive hit, reaching number one in almost every country where it was released and selling millions of copies. At the age of 52, Larkin found himself catapulted into pop stardom. Mildly shocked by his sudden success, he saw, Scatman, as a platform to inspire others. He focused on writing lyrics that addressed overcoming adversity, accepting oneself, and finding peace in a chaotic world drawing from his own experiences. Larkin became a champion within the stuttering community, earning numerous awards for his contributions and establishing a foundation to support people who stutter. The second single, Scatman's World, also found success, with the album of the same name selling nearly 2 million copies in Japan alone. In Japan, he remains one of the most successful overseas artists of all time. Larkin went on to record two more albums and multiple singles, amassing impressive sales figures, 
over 4.5 million albums, 4.5 million singles, and over 35 million compilations worldwide, earning 17 gold and 22 platinum certifications. His accolades included Artist of the Year in Japan, an Echo Award in Germany, and a nomination from MTV Europe for Best Male Artist. He was also honored with Europe's Gold Inner Award. Despite his fame, which came in his 50s, Larkin remained grounded, with his central ambition being to use his music to help kids of all ages. Sadly, Larkin's time in the limelight was unexpectedly cut short when his health began to fail in 1998, despite managing to record his third album, Take Your Time. He was later diagnosed with lung cancer and underwent intensive treatment. Despite his illness, Larkin maintained an uplifting attitude, expressing acceptance of whatever fate awaited him, telling close friend Gina, whatever God wants is fine by me. I've had the very best life. I have tasted beauty. On December 3rd, he passed away at his home in Los Angeles at the age of 57. In 2001, his ashes were scattered at sea near Malibu, California, marking the end of a remarkable journey. Larkin's wife Judy, who had been his steadfast companion and supporter throughout his life, would later pass away in 2023. Larkin's message is evergreen and will continue to resonate and uplift generations to come. In his own words, my greatest problem in my childhood is now my greatest asset. I'm trying to tell the kids today that creation gave us all problems for a purpose, and that your biggest problems contain a source of strength to not only step over those problems, but all our other problems as well. And there you have it. As we bid farewell, let us remember Scatman John's indelible mark on the world of music. His enduring legacy will live on through his infectious beats and uplifting message of perseverance. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching. Take care and bye for now.